I'd like to welcome you out to this week's port. We're officially on a hurricane watch here for Hurricane Hillary, which is most likely going to be a, oh, not most likely, definitely going to be a tropical storm by the time it gets up here. Uh, if you guys saw the weather forecast yesterday, it looked pretty, uh, pretty interesting with, you know, gusts to 50, 60 miles an hour to the southeast. Outside of San Diego, um, I'm no weatherman, but when I saw that originally, I saw the amount of northwest wind we're having on outside the bite that's wrapping around here. I kind of doubted that that would hold its course, and uh, turns out that my uh, my blind guess was correct, and it's sliding inland. So what's happening right now? It looks like it's going to slide up the Baja coast, and it's going to hit the topography off Baja, kind of be in the Sea of Cortez, kind of be on the Pacific side. They'll dampen it a bit. There's some cold water down off Ensenada. They've had some uplowing down there. Around put the Bonda, that's probably going to peter out even more. But it uh, looks like the uh, by the time it gets up this way, that northwest wind's going to push it inland. So I'm sure we'll have quite a bit of rain, probably in the mountains of San Diego and uh, out in the desert, probably here in Long Beach area, L.A. County as well. But uh, I don't think it's going to be that big weather event we were all uh, imagining was going to happen. But that's probably for the best. So uh, all that in mind, you know, if you're heading out this weekend, uh, Sunday, Afternoon, it looks like that stuff's going to come up here, and um, you're probably better off not being underwater just in case uh, in case things change. And again, check the weather before you head out because that could uh, that modeling could uh, could shift again depending on uh, a bunch of factors. Anyway, uh, let's head up to the Channel Islands. You know, they're still having some good fishing up there. There's some sea bass still biting, and the guys fishing bass are having good good both calicos and sand bass up there. Not that big exciting bite that's been happening in the past months here, but you know, it's, uh, I don't know, a lot of that squid up that way is either at islands they can't get to because of the wind or it's kind of dried up, which it often does at this time of year when the water warms up. Um, there's still some bluefin up that way. They're seeing them as far up as uh, close to uh, Point Conception. I'm sure they go well beyond there, but uh, in that channel, there's a lot of fish up that way. The bad part of this weekend is be a lot of wind in that channel as well, so you may want to wait until uh, till after the weekend. It, the weather looks a lot better across Southern California after the storm rolls through. We should have several days of really nice weather afterwards and plenty of chance to go look for bluefin up there. Um, this weekend, if you're going out, you're probably going to be relegated to the, the lee of Santa Cruz Island or down by Anacapa. It looks decent on the map, but that, you're getting plenty of good fishing down there anyway. You know, definitely catch bass, sea bass, halibut, all that kind of stuff. Probably barracuda, maybe yellowtail down in that zone. Um, so, you know, I'm going to skip Clemente again because there's really nobody's getting out there and it's going to be windy out there all weekend. You know, as far as private boaters go, I think cat is going to be about the limit of where you're going to be able to go on Saturday or Sunday. Just because we have this consistent, you know, 8 to 10 knots of wind all day long, and it's blowing a little bit harder in the afternoon. And while it doesn't sound like a lot of wind, it's been blowing for several days now, and it's just going to make for tough skiff fishing uh, in a lot of areas. But uh, there's been some really big yellows biting on the backside east end. I know the Fury and I think the uh, Dana Pride and some of the boats out of Dana Point have been on pretty consistently. I mean, it's a really nice grade of fish. Um, I haven't heard about them being up boiling around and stuff, so if you're a private boater, you might want to take some bait. You know, fish that size, I don't think would have any trouble eating a mackerel. Um, and that might save you from catching a million short calicos on sardines. Um, yeah, that's really the only thing I've heard from uh, Cat. I know that uh, Vaughn Podmore, the fly, uh, fly fishing guy, has been over there on the front and catching barracuda, being in calicos. But other than that, I really haven't heard a whole lot. In on the coast, the sand bass fishing is still good. Uh, it's best at night. Twilight trips are, are doing the best of all, but they're still catching plenty of fish. Uh, also, barracuda are biting for the boats. It's not as good as it has been, but the uh, the bass bite uh, continues to be good. I know the water temps have dropped in several areas up there in that zone, so you know it's uh, very prone to upwelling in that in uh, that shelf there. So you should, you know. If you find an area with cold, dirty water, I'd try and look for something else. But luckily, that cold, dirty water doesn't normally stick around too long. So if it does, it's going to be a day or two. It should bounce back. And speaking of cold, dirty water, I went to PV on Saturday morning. And uh, that's exactly what we found uh, below the closure. Horrible red tide, like 68-degree water. It had been 71 the last time I was up there. Never even saw a fish below, uh, below the Vincini MPA. Um, 
slow day overall, but you know, we, uh, if you found the right leading edge, you would get notification really quickly that the bass were biting. And I was talking about that, you know, hey, you know, how long to fish a zone. 90% of the spots that we find that they're biting are biting on the first or second cast if there's going to be more biting fish there at all. And I've got three little short videos here. Matt catches two bass and loses one, but it really shows you just how quickly you can expect to start catching fish when you get into the right conditions, especially when you pull up on a leading edge of a kelp bed and there's some signs of bait or there's birds or, you're, or you establish a pattern that they're on this isolated kelp. And then you go to the, it's kind of what happened this day. There was a little patch of the kelp that were isolated where current had the kelp down and their service kelp next to it and those bass were holding in very specific spots. Um, these little quick three videos here really kind of uh, emphasize that point. Oh. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. Oh, oh. Nice ones too. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of them there. Looks like the new Del Mar over there. Same correct direction? Yeah, it's uphill. This guy coming into fish? What's this guy doing, man? I don't know. Oh! Nice! That's a good one. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, now that is how you want to hook them. Right there, look at that. Yep. Is he coming off? No. All the way through. Kind of going into the beach and down. Found him. Yeah. yeah, like I said, it was uh, fairly slow fishing, so we decided to peel off the island and, uh, and take a look offshore a little bit, or peel up uh, Rocky Point there and take a look offshore. And you know, one of the other uh, things I have to mention is it's uh, if you can get out and fish on a weekday in the afternoon after work, whatever, it's so much better than trying to fish around all kinds of boats there on the weekend, man. It's not like 90% of these guys aren't fishing spots, right? But all they're doing is just really blocking access to the stuff you want to fish. And it's, it's a lot easier if you can take a day off to go and you'll have a lot more fun. But uh, we got frustrated with the slow bite and the amount of boats out there. So we decided to take a look offshore, you know, look at an area where no one's really looked. We heard about some bluefin and yellowfin being down off uh, outside the Avalon Bank or in above there up towards Cat. So um, I figured I'd take a route that no one's taken. So I basically ran from Rocky Point to about the Isthmus on a course that way. And that is, you know, due to the fact that you're not really coming from a direction of a harbor or anything else, there's very few boats, if any, that are going to be making that crossing or driving through that area looking for fish. And that always makes me feel a little bit better. Um, 
Started to see you live about six miles off Rock. He actually ran over a Marlin uh, while we were going fast that uh, we didn't see until the last second. Uh, he basically just squirted out from under the bow, which was kind of cool. We didn't have anything to cast on him with anyway. But uh, kind of looked around on the way across. And, you know, I've talked about no man's land in previous uh, videos. And this is kind of no man's land out there, too. Other than the boot up above there, you really have just a bunch of uh, generic topography between Rocky Point and Catalina. So your chances of isolating or finding fish out there are really pretty slim. Um, we ended up uh, looking for some defined structure which ended up being the 500 fathom curve on the front side of Cat. And we basically, once I got the Cat a little bit above the isthmus, I kind of ran down that 500 fathom curve and looked to either side. Eventually found a bunch of birds and rizzos and other stuff. And we saw some fish boiling that we thought were tuna, but they were just ended up just being big bonita on bird schools and uh, they were up and down quick and we were hoping to find something other than that so we didn't really waste much time on them. We ended up running down to about the Avalon, looked around, saw some boats trolling more and then we, we bugged out for the end of the shipping lanes which is another good area to some swine fish and uh, basically once we get out there we cut into the San Gabriel Canyon which is the canyon that is on the south side of the rigs. Um, kind of like where the mussel farm is, there's a canyon that's out of there. Not a lot of people look at that, but we've often caught yellowfin right outside of there. So we looked around, found a lot of turns of birds, but no fish actively up and um, we decided to head in. You know, we burned maybe two hours making that route. It was right on the tide. So ended up nothing really happened in that zone that day, but uh, I liked the uh, procedure there and it kind of, uh, if we would have had some, we would have had to ourselves the whole time because we didn't really encounter other boats close by. Um, while we're on the topic of offshore, you know, it's been good bluefin fishing for sport boats and four-pack boats and stuff like that. Uh, I know uh, Sika sport fishing at Dana Point has consistently been on big bluefin. A lot of the other four-pack boats are doing it as well. Um, sport boats are most, and those guys are getting mostly on flying fish at this point. That's the number one thing. And um, the uh, sport boats are mostly out of Tanner and Cortez. I don't know if they'll be out there this weekend because the wind. It's kind of, I, I think Saturday might be doable, but Sunday is not looking too hot. Um, I know the Thunderbird was out there. They get a bunch of guys fishing balloons with flying fish on them. And, you know, my friend Mitch mentioned they're flying like 20 balloons at a time, which is not too far from the truth, but they're having real good success with that. And they uh, got a bunch of bluefin. They got a nice marlin the other day and uh, out there as well. I know the boat's fishing on the banks. We're also getting some yellows and the smaller bluefin. So there's basically two choices you have out there. You can, you know, fish on or near the banks for yellowtail and smaller bluefin, or you can target those bigger ones. And uh, if you target the bigger ones, you're going to need flying fish or things like that, or it's going to be a very pitched battle on, uh, on lighter tackle. You know, speaking of that, the night bite is still happening. Uh, my friend Kim, who uh, works with Matt over at Fairview, went out on, uh, I think, the Polaris Supreme, had a couple of nice bluefin at night. Good for her. Hopefully, we both won on the uh, rod. I built her for her birthday, but we'll have to see. Um, yeah, just good consistent bluefin fishing, but uh, I think this wind this weekend is going to kind of put a damper on things. So that may hold off until Tuesday or Wednesday before everybody starts getting back up on that, depending on how long the storm lingers around here. Um, heading down to San Diego, you know, they're getting some really nice yellowtail on the coast down there. I know the half day boat, I think it's a new Seaforth, and got a real good one the other day, and there's just scattered fish coming from along the coast there, and that's really nice to see. They're also having good bass fishing down there. So uh, you San Diego guys have something to do other than uh, not catch tuna and Dorado and Yellowtail uh, offshore. But uh, corn oz are biting as well. I heard the water rolled a little bit down there yesterday, but uh, that should bounce back quickly. Those fish don't seem to care. You know, I always talk about the uh, first family of fishing. Uh, Danny Erickson and his wife and kids, and uh, they went down into San Diego and just had a blast catching yellowtail on the surface iron bait, everything else. And, uh, you know, the summertime fishing at Coronado is when the yellows around. It's a lot of fun. I know a lot of the boats for the last, heck, you know, eight, nine years now have been fishing offshore all summer long. But, uh, you know, if you want to just go have a good time, throw the iron, catch some yellows, you know, fly line bait if you want to, whatever. I'd get on one of those trips to the Coronado Islands. It's a nice relaxed atmosphere. They're not rushing around or driving constantly, looking for the next thing. They're actually fishing actively and, uh, and having a good time. So, you know, I know the San Diego's doing that. I'm sure the Liberty and Grande might be online for that as well. Mission Bell out of uh, Point Loma, always a good choice. But, 
Yeah, you know, that's, uh, if that bite holds up, I might have to head down there myself. Not on my own boat, of course, to, not going to do the sport boat thing, but uh, not that there's anything wrong with it. I just get uh, frustrated by the speed at which the boats go and the amount of people on them and all kinds of weird stuff. But, you know, I'm not a normal person. Anyway, um, yeah, we got the wind coming Sunday, some rain into Monday. I don't know how bad it'll be. I don't think it's going to be very bad on the water, but, uh, you know, just uh, take a look at the weather before you head out. And if you're thinking about fishing Sunday, I'd fish in the morning and try and be home before it all comes together. But, you know, we've got some nice weather coming up next week, and hopefully we can uh, get back to our previously scheduled programming and uh, have some good fishing. So uh, you guys have a great weekend, and good luck if you fish.